Well, the hard fact about Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 remained, to say the least, in short supply. Any new information released sparks a host of conspiracies by some, just as quickly debunked by others. Aviation commentator Peter Clark has joined us again uh, to, to try and look at what we do know. And I guess, Peter, I know the answer to my first question. What do we know now compared to a week ago? I actually don't think we know much more than we knew a week ago. The only thing is possibly the MRSAT pings, which has extended the search area. But basically, we know nothing more. Uh, so we can agree on the fact we know nothing. Authorities, though, do seem certain. The one thing they seem certain about is that somebody deliberately changed the course of the plane and that that person had to be in the cockpit. Well, that seems to be the information, and it seems to be from the flight management computer that that course was programmed in and changed. But that would have to be physically loaded in as coordinates into the flight management computer for the plane and then to activate it to initiate that action. I got very excited with this Chris Goodfellow theory. This is the ex-Canadian pilot, Canadian ex-pilot, should I say, uh, uh, who's looked at it from a pilot's perspective and said, actually, this, this captain in this pl flight might have been a hero doing everything right, whether it to be a fire on board. He ch he's, changed the, he's flown the plane, he's changed the direction to the nearest safe airport uh, runway but he hasn't been able to communicate back. You're not so sure about this theory? Look, there's, there's communication. The, if the um, transponder was working, he could have squawked a code on that. There's lots of things, but it's just a turn back, but nothing more was completed from that. We did hear from a fishing village that the plane was low level, flying in that direction, but we never heard any more. No one else saw it after that. Did it run into the mountains or anything like that on the Malay Peninsula? We don't know. There is just all of these ideas and things that have taken place, but nothing has given us any firm action or firm destination where it went. You're feeling a frustration, I think, which, which so many of us are. And, and in the break, you actually mentioned to me, uh, you know, Rawdon, uh, we're in this day and age where we can find an iPhone anywhere on the globe, but we can't find a plane. The systems which are available to airlines now, inadequate? I think there's a whole myriad of things that have come out of this. The way we navigate aircraft now is all done data, through data links. Planes from, flying from Los Angeles to Auckland, they basically don't talk to anyone the whole flight. It's all done by data links and, and through, throughout the flight, course changes using fans, which is a system. It's all there. We've got navigation system, ADSB, where it's all based on data systems. And all of a sudden, that has all failed. And the moment that fails, we have no further information. And it really worries me now because airlines need to know, passengers need to know, um, the manufacturer needs to know what happened to this plane, why did it do this? And I know the, going back to the fire, it's aviate, navigate and then communicate. But where did it go? It's just one incident and we then there's no continuation on that. So somewhere in the system we have to make sure if the only thing we get out of this extraordinary story is that airlines look at the communication systems they have and make sure this can never happen. And I think accident investigation needs to be more foolproof. I think we've seen, um, I still don't know the timelines of any of these events. We're hearing continual changes mm -hmm. from the Malaysians and timelines on how things happened, when things were turned off, last words, one minute I'm hearing it's from the co-pilot, next minute I'm hearing from the pilot. There is no, Nothing is in stone at the moment and nothing I can really rely on that I'm hearing. And that's what makes the authorities look so completely incompetent in the way they've handled this particular investigation. Peter Clark, thank you very much for your time yet again.